tell me about the, the workings of the service registry uh, and the ESR and how how it works. Um, so in general, ESR is not used that much. It's uh, very few cases where I've been working on it. Um, I have one uh, project where we're using it and the th here we are using it because messages is coming from so we have a Java engine or the Java system there we are calling out uh, to, to some web services to get uh, information about what what's happening calling out from from and calling up some PI services for that to work we need to publish these into the service registry so users would be able to see uh, so the system can see okay if I want to call this service ID I can call this service registry so that is so far what I've been using uh, service registry for I did see uh, an example and this was in the Dutch user group where some company uh, I think it was insurance agency um, were using um, these attributes and it was um, yeah, pretty useful uh, in in the sense they got um, how do you say they had one place where they could publish these services. No, actually, they were using uh, some some other uh, service registry ODD UDDI registry because it contains some more functionality that the service registry from PI doesn't really contain. Um, so if we just have a short look at it. I'm not sure if, if mine works, if it has been configured or not. Um, but in the service registry, we can log in. And to see what kind of services it is. So I guess I haven't been using it that much on this system. Um, as you can see. Um, there is some settings you need to, to configure for this to work. Uh, maybe this is done with the automated approaches. Uh, and with that, oh, there's some, some visit for setting up. So it knows when whenever we are going to publish it, it's going to be published in this uh, service registry. But if you have a SOAP communication channel, like we do have here, then you do have the option here to publish in service registry and I guess I haven't configured the service registry if I had I would be able to to put in publish and put in these uh, things in here configure the connecting new administrate and try again um, the other thing that is a good thing to to deal with if you're using service registry is on the interfaces, you can go in and set uh, attributes on them. So once something comes into the service registry, uh, see if we have anything here. Um, then so on your uh, you have this tab about creating classifications and I guess this requires that the service registry is set up. But then you can set up classification, like what are the line of businesses using this? What are the, the different attributes that's been set up for, for this to work? Um, and if, if you've got those things installed, then it should be fairly simple to, to run these things and, and classify the services and make sure they, they have the right attributes. And yeah, then, then business users can search for them and see who has some services that, that has these, uh, these attributes. Um, and obviously, maybe, so we got some service groups. and classifications if they have been set up uh, we would also be able to, to see those those there 
Um, but yeah, most likely it would be a good idea if, if, if this was up and running and using it. But in general, it is, uh, it's seldom that you want to use it uh, because it's, yeah, a little complex and little, little too many, uh, uh, details to set up. Uh, there is also the option instead of using SAPs to publish to a uh, normal UDDI registry if you have some third party registry that you're using. And I think this insurance agency that was doing that, uh, was it HP I think they used? Uh, there was some, some setting of uh, some document about how to use uh, SAP together with with uh, with this uh, service registry and then they just went for that.